I have gathered all of the official information, fan theories, and my personal thoughts on The Witcher 4's upcoming School of the Lynx. And today I will lay out all of this information. So, welcome to another video by me, The Witcher George, as I discuss The School of the Lynx. What is it? The School of the Lynx is perhaps the most mysterious Witcher school out of all the known Witcher schools, although one day perhaps it will be only second to the School of the Wolf in our knowledge about its history and members, and that is because it will be the centre of an entirely new upcoming Witcher trilogy, being developed by CD Projekt Red. So far, very little has been officially confirmed, but the Witcher 4's developers have made occasional comments about it, and fans have been hard at work trying to work out exactly what this school is and what it could tell us about the next Witcher game. When The Witcher 4, although it might be more accurate to say The Witcher Polaris, was first announced by CD Projekt Red, we were given a single image. This image, of what many fans thought was a lynx medallion, although many other animals were also speculated at the time, like a tiger, snow leopard, or some kind of altered version of the cat medallion. However, the global communications director for CD Projekt Red, Robert Malinowski, confirmed in an interview with Eurogamer that the medallion is in fact shaped after a lynx. Now, why is this significant? It's significant because many fans of The Witcher already know the existing Witcher schools. So that's the School of the Wolf, Griffin, Cat, Bear, Manticore, Viper, and Crane. But the School of the Lynx is something fans have never seen before. It was not in the books, or even the previous Witcher games, including the spin-off games like Thronebreaker. This shows us that the new trilogy of Witcher games will be something outside of the established lore. Of course, CD Projekt Red have already made plenty of additions to the Witcher lore, so this isn't something new. They have essentially established their own separate canon to the books from the very first Witcher game. The Viper School was officially added in The Witcher 2, and Manticore and Bear in The Witcher 3, and they have been retconned into the previous games in one way or another, for example, making Geralt's armour in The Witcher 1 very closely resemble the Manticore armour, and well, it is essentially the Manticore armour that became available in the Blood and Wine expansion, which was the final expansion of The Witcher 3. So they've essentially found ways to connect it to the previous games in sort of a clever way. So The Witcher 4 just seems to be continuing that trend. But in what way? How will a School of the Lynx school fit into the game's lore? Will it be a retcon, or perhaps as many fans believe, be a newly established school after the events of The Witcher 3? The most important consideration we can have right now when deciphering anything about this school is this. What have we seen before? Well, it's obvious, right guys? We've seen the other Witcher schools. The School of the Wolf are like the classic warriors, many being the lone wolf types, sort of the protagonists I suppose you could say, but also being a close pack of witchers, sort of like a family. The School of the Cat were turned assassins, sneaky, nimble, and, well, cat-like. The School of the Bear were the heavy armor witchers, they tend to be loners, not forming strong bonds, but they have incredible endurance and, well, they're trained in the mountains, so they're these pretty awesome kind of bear-like witches. The Griffin Witchers tended to specialize in signs and were more knightly in nature. The Viper Witchers, they specialized in poison, traps, that sort of thing, and, well, more recently assassinating kings. The Manticore Witchers occupied the outskirts of the Korath Desert, being the more mysterious, and in the context of how closed off Nilfgaard and the Northern Kingdoms are from the other kingdoms and sort of entities within the world, you could say that the School of the Manticore is the sort of exotic Witcher School, or at least the Witcher School we know the least about, and the Crane Witcher School, well, they specialize in killing monsters of the sea and air, and we don't really know that much about them. But what about the lynx? Well, consider a lynx. A lynx is a medium-sized species of cat, not as big or strong as a tiger or lion, but not as small and nimble as, well, a cat. Don't let their size fool you, they are still incredible predators, they are great climbers, and they're fast. In fact, they're so fast and can jump so high that they're known to be able to catch birds mid-flight at times. They also hunt by climbing trees and waiting there for their prey to move below them, and then they jump down and surprise them. These tactics allow them to hunt a variety of prey, most notably deer, which are a bit bigger than them. They also tend to live in boreal forests, some of which are nearby mountains or elevated, so they're not exactly, I suppose you could say, on the ground, kind of up in the hills, kind of forests, around mountains, that sort of thing, in snow, and they prefer to live alone once reaching adulthood. Their colours vary from brown to goldish to a sort of beige white, but I would like to theorise, based on the European roots of the Witcher's story and many of the monsters in the games, that the lynx species this school would be based off 
is the Eurasian lynx. There are other species of lynx such as bobcats and the Canada lynx and the Iberian lynx, except the Iberian lynx and the Eurasian lynx are quite similar. The Iberian lynx is sort of a subspecies of the Eurasian lynx, many people think, at least, or they used to think. But based on the concept art released and the general themes and setting of the games and books, I would assume that it's going to be a Eurasian lynx. Now, I have further reasons for this, and that is that in Poland, where the games are developed and the Witcher's writer is from, a subspecies of the Eurasian lynx, the northern lynx, can be found. But to be honest, after researching this video and doing probably doing way too much research on lynxes, I found myself wondering about another subspecies, the Siberian lynx, which is also a Eurasian lynx, but it's kind of a subspecies, there's a lot of different subspecies primarily due to the Siberian association with snow, and just if I was a game developer and I was looking at the lynxes, I'd be like, oh, Siberian lynx, that sounds kind of cool, it's like a Siberian tiger or something like that, it just sounds kind of interesting. But another consideration I had is perhaps it could be a combination of all the subspecies, or just all the lynx species in general, similar to how you have the School of the Wolf, which is not a specific wolf, I mean there's grey wolves, timber wolves, that sort of thing, but it's just the School of the Wolf, it's not the School of the Grey Wolf. So it could just be lynxes in general. However, I feel that based on what we know about this series, if they're going to be researching lynxes to try and work out what sort of lynx they want to use for their inspiration, the Eurasian lynx is probably going to be what they're going to go for because, well, a lot of these game developers are Polish, that lynx is from Poland, so you'd imagine that's what they're going to be using for inspiration. Although I'm sure they'll be using bits of the other ones as well. But what's interesting about the Eurasian lynx is their coats actually change from summer to winter going from a short reddish brown in summer to a thick silver grey in winter. Because when you look at the medallion, I always picture some sort of grey, snowy lynx, and then I was researching this video and I saw that in summer they look different. And I thought, I wonder if this could have some impact on the armour available for the School of the Lynx. For example, the School of the Bear has bear fur incorporated into the armour. It looks very kind of Norse and, uh, I don't want to say Skelligan, but you know what I mean, kind of Viking-like. So I wonder if the School of the Lynx, there could be potentially different types of armor depending on what kind of path you go through. There could be the kind of summer armor, or there could be the winter armor. Imagine if the game had seasons and it changed in the seasons. That would be incredible, but I, I really doubt they do something like that. You could ask, why would the first still change? Magic? <laughs> why not? I think that's quite an interesting thing, but it could be nice to be able to choose which fur scheme we have or which color scheme we have, which would be really cool to link it with the animal more. So you may be wondering, why is this guy talking so much about lynxes? Why is this important? I want to know about the Witcher, I don't want to know about this animal. Well, we know that the other school's animals have some, albeit minor, influences on the Witchers in them, as I have discussed. So, what could the lynx tell us about the School of the Lynx Witchers? Well, I feel that as a medium-sized cat, the armor will be much like that of the School of the Wolf's armor, so a medium style. I would assume the Witchers are a sort of cross of the School of the Cat and Wolf in their flexibility and dexterity, perhaps using a similar style to something like Ciri, so a sort of light, medium style of fighting. The school's home may be in a forested area, or elevated forested mountainous area, perhaps like Kaer Morhen, and in my opinion, I imagine that the school will look like something of a cross between the School of the Wolf and the School of the Cat. Now, this feeds into many possible theories about the School of the Lynx, which I will discuss now. The first is that this school was founded by Ciri. Ciri spent many years holding a cat medallion that she retrieved after the death of Leo Bonhart. She has a lighter style, and there is possibly a Witcher 3 ending in which she becomes a Witcher. Perhaps the School of the Lynx is a school she founded, and it's set after the events of the Witcher 3, and Ciri took inspiration from this cat and wolf connection she has, and picked an animal she saw as a kind of combination of the two. This doesn't necessarily mean we'll be playing as Ciri, it just means it could be possible she founded this school. I personally don't like this idea, as it could invalidate our choices in The Witcher 3, as in one ending she becomes the Empress, in another she possibly dies, but I would also like to theorise that they could make the decisions work. Perhaps it's just set much further in the future, and Ciri is just the founder. So you can just tell the game, like with The Witcher 2 simulated decisions, that have you heard about Ciri? She was the Empress, she was a Witcher, I don't know, that kind of thing. And then depending on which ending you pick, it can just essentially mean she founded the school after that. So for example, she founded it while being the Empress, or she founded it after becoming a Witcher, as in the ending where she possibly dies. It's not actually confirmed she dies, she just doesn't see Geralt, so she could come back and then found this school. And regardless of whether she becomes an Empress, Witcher or whatever, she still has that Witcher training, and she's still very good at combat, so there's no reason 
she couldn't pick this up regardless of the ending one day. Especially as the Emperor, she would have enough power to do that and enough money. As a Witcher it makes sense, and the other way, I'm sure they could find a way. So, you can't really rule this out completely. The next is a fan theory that I feel has no substantial evidence, but I've got to talk about it because of the amount of articles that discuss this is incredible in my opinion, but it became popularised after the School of the Lynx was announced, and it happened to be the only piece of information anyone had on what the School of the Lynx could be. So this was on the Witcher Wiki, and it was an idea that essentially said that Lambert and Kira Metz, as well as some other witches, founded this school. This one is a bit of a headache, as there's a lot of issues here. First of all, Kira can indisputably be killed in The Witcher 3. I don't know how they would retcon that, unless they just quite literally said, your decision doesn't matter, she didn't die. And even if she doesn't die, it doesn't mean she necessarily ends up with Lambert, because you can tell her not to go to Kaer Morn, Lambert can also possibly die, which is something many fans may not be aware of. So there's multiple decisions that are invalidated if they went that route, which I really doubt. Next, there is no love lost between Lambert and the Witcher profession, and I can't imagine him going on to take children and train them to be witches. It just does not seem to be in line with the character and his arc in The Witcher 3. But it could happen, I suppose. Maybe Vesemir's death really changed him. I won't discuss this theory any further, or the lore that was sort of created for this by a fan, because you can look that up if you're interested, and I don't think it will have any bearing on the School of the Lynx going into the next games. But if it does, wow, I will be very surprised and I'm curious how they would manage to do that. I have many thoughts on the next Witcher game and the School of the Lynx. I've spent many years making videos about the Witcher and participating in the community, and one idea I have seen a lot, and I mean a lot, perhaps it's even the most common idea, and it's that people want a game with multiple Witcher schools. Now before you go crazy, there is some merit to this idea. With Cyberpunk for the first time, CD Projekt Red allowed different paths for your protagonist, depending on which faction you chose. Perhaps the School of the Lynx is just one of many factions, the others being alternative Witcher schools. We may still have an established protagonist, but just with a different beginning depending on which school you select. So for example, you choose one of the schools, you play through that school a bit, and then you've found the School of the Lynx, something like that. It could actually be fun to have a protagonist that gets taken as a child of surprise, and we end up training to become a Witcher. Maybe the School of the Lynx is even a long extinct Witcher school, and we can experience the world at the height of the Witcher's power which would explain why we'd never heard about the School of the Lynx in the main trilogy, because it would have been long gone by that point. Personally, I would rather just stick with an established protagonist in the world in a single school. I don't want to feel like the school choice is arbitrary, or the character doesn't really exist in the lore, which would have to be the case to account for the school choice. If you choose which school you make, and if that school goes on to make the School of the Lynx, or something like that, it just becomes we don't actually really know what the official law around that is unless CD Projekt Red say something, and then that invalidates our choices. I want them to say, this is how the world is, this is your character, and then you have a bit of decisions within there about how the world goes, but this is what the School of the Lynx is. I want it to have a strong identity. I don't want to think that the school I chose for my playthrough was the non-canon choice. I don't think fans like that kind of feeling. The Witcher 3 is great because there's so many decisions you can have, and there's no set canon choice. I mean, yeah, they did do the anniversary video and a lot of people think, oh, well, Siri becomes a witcher or something, but that's just a fun video. They never said, this is what happened. And I think that's, that's something you've got to really keep with. So essentially, the best choice, and in keeping with the witcher, is to just make a cool, established protagonists that fans can connect with. Because then, we're not all just thinking about our own characters, we're thinking about, we all like this character, in the same way we like Geralt, we like Triss, we like Yennefer, we like these characters. We don't need to have our own. There are plenty of games that allow you to do that. The Witcher is great because you play as, well, the Witcher, which is Geralt, and we'll have to see who the next Witcher might be. But does this mean I don't ever want to see a Witcher game like this? No, but this is the first trilogy since The Witcher 3. I think it's incredibly important that CD Projekt Red stick the landing, or the drop-off will be significant. People are very attached to Geralt. If you just say, right, now make your own, it's like, well, well okay, this is quite sudden. I think they need to prove that they can go out on their own and do this. And although many fans disagree with me because of the possible Witcher 2 ending in which he dies, I always wanted to see a game where you play as Letho, as he's such a cool character, but I'll discuss that in the future. So just to conclude this, I think that the most likely way that the game will be played is that we will have a new protagonist in the School of the Lynx with a new story, I imagine set before the events of The Witcher 3, or just in an entirely new place, 
because messing with that timeline just seems like it will annoy everyone in some small way, so let's not do that for the first new trilogy coming out, let's try and do something a bit different. The biggest concern many fans now have is that if the new school can stand up to the legacy of Geralt. I think CD Projekt Red have proven in the past they can make compelling original characters in schools, like Letho and the School of the Viper. But I will admit there have been some concerning changes to the company since The Witcher 3's release, with many staff leaving and many new staff coming on, but for now I am being optimistic and I'm going to wait and see what they come out with in trailers and other material. As who knows, Maybe they'll drop some incredible cinematic, like A Night to Remember, and I'll be sold until the game releases. We don't actually know yet, and with the recent cyberpunk expansion and the positive press around that, it could show that the company is really trying to do something a bit better than what happened with Cyberpunk's release. The next concern many people have is why they decided to make a new school. They already have so many established schools, we haven't had a chance to play as properly, the school of the Viper, Bear, Griffin, Cat, Manticore and Crane. Why establish something new? when there's so much unexplored territory. Perhaps this even lends itself to more evidence about wanting to separate it from The Witcher 3, or evidence to it being a new school after the events of The Witcher 3. Personally, for their new trilogy, I would much rather have a game exploring the other schools and the other areas of the continent we haven't seen before. For example, a game about the school of the Viper in their heyday in Nilfgaard. That's so many unexplored areas at the same time. We get to see another Witcher keep, get to see the school of the Vipers doing stuff, we get to see Nilfgaard, I think it would be a great game, and I hope that their new game isn't a complete departure from the great storytelling of The Witcher 3, and just continues to be that style of game. Obviously there should be advancements, of course, but you don't want to get rid of the core themes of that game, the way that game was crafted, the different decisions, the sort of greatness of that world. You don't want to just think, right, new story, new place, new everything, it's The Witcher, we're going to slap the IP on it you still have to remember that this is The Witcher. It's not just something completely different. Another big concern that I've seen a lot is the Siri protagonist concern, and it's that this new school could just be founded by her and you play as her, and that would invalidate so many Witcher endings, possibly. And it also just means some other issues, like she's quite overpowered, especially at the end of The Witcher 3. Are they going to have to remove her powers somehow? Is it just going to sort of mess around with the character a lot? A lot of people don't even really like Ciri as a main character. She's great as a supporting character, and in the book she was really interesting, but just she sort of finished her arc in a way, and it's like, are we just going to be playing as this character who's sort of finished her arc in a way? I mean, it's, it's like, do we want to have that, or do we want to have something new? It's like, a lot of people don't want to be playing as Ciri because, well, the other truth is she isn't an actual witcher, she just has a lot of amazing powers and training. She could become a witcher, but yet again it kind of defeat some themes of the books as well, so that's quite a concern for a lot of people. And there's also a lot of concerns in general, and I've got to be careful with how I say this because I'm going to try and make this make sense, and it's about having a female protagonist because, in the lore, traditionally females couldn't become witches, but then it was sort of, maybe they could with the school of the cat and different things like that, so there's definitely a possibility there, and I'm not completely against that. I just think that you've got to be careful with how much you change with this new trilogy. You know, if you have a new school, you change the lore around witches, it could just become like, what is happening to the witcher? But it could still be a great thing, and you know, we might get a trailer, there could be a female protagonist, and it could be a great thing, so I'm not completely against that sort of thing. The one thing I don't want, which is something the Assassin's Creed games do, which I'm not a fan of, is where they give you a female and a male protagonist. I would rather just have one. I think it sort of just makes it quite confusing, and then they have to canonize one of them, and I would rather just be like, look, this is the character, this is the world, we're gonna make it engaging, that's it. To be honest, it doesn't matter if the character is necessarily a girl or not, it could be a boy, could be a girl, it's just how they handle that with the lore and respect what has been established. And of course, the most important thing is, if they do make this character a girl, if they change the witcher's lore, if they do all of this stuff, it has to serve the story, it can't just be because they just think, oh, let's do that. I really want to see this as a great game, a great new witcher game, there's nothing wrong with any of these things, and I'm addressing this because it's such a big concern I've seen in comments. And I just want people to know that just having a girl character isn't necessarily bad, they've changed the lore a lot in the past, it could be good, but let's just hope that that is their main focus, just having a great story, and it serves that. So that's some of the main concerns I've seen for now, and some of my concerns about the School of the Lynx and the direction of the Witcher franchise in general. I'd love to do some more videos about this soon, let me know what you'd like me to talk about, let me know any thoughts you have in the comments down below. 
I'm trying to be quite positive about this because we don't know a lot about it yet. Cyberpunk has had a great comeback. The next Witcher game could be great. I think it will be great. We'll have to see what they come out with. We'll have to see what they decide to do. It could be really good, guys. So far, we know very little about this Witcher score. But in this video, I've tried to explore what it could be based on what we already know about the Witcher franchise, and I hope that at the very least you feel optimistic about what a School of the Lynx could be. To be honest, if they were going to pick any animal to make a new Witcher school, I quite like the Lynx idea. It's a medium-sized, ferocious snow cat. It is not too far away from a wolf, but just different enough to show us a new style of Witcher game. And it's an actual real animal. So, I am quietly excited about what is to come, and only time will tell if this excitement is justified or not. Let's see what comes out with the trailers. Thank you for watching today's video, guys. Please like it to support this sort of content, subscribe if you're new, and check out my other channel, The Ranger George. I've been getting some great support on there recently. I made a video that I'm really proud of, and it seems to be doing well, and you guys like it, so I, I do appreciate that. It took a long time to make, so thank you for all of that sort of support. I'm also considering bringing back the playthroughs on either that channel or my other forgotten channel, Samurai George. So let me know if you'd like to see playthroughs and stuff like the Witcher 3 playthrough and which channel you'd like to see them on. I feel that I can't really be doing it on the Witcher George channel because it's mainly Witcher stuff. The Samurai George channel could have that on, Ranger George channel could have that on, but I'm trying to do sort of the Witcher style videos but about different games on that channel. So I don't want to, I want to basically give you guys options to decide do you want to see this content or not? So you can see stuff on The Witcher George about The Witcher. You can see stuff on The Ranger George about fantasy in general. Then maybe on Samurai George, you can see stuff about just me playing games and actually showing you how I go through these games and make decisions. But managing three channels can be a bit messy, so just let me know what you guys would like to see. I'm really curious if there's any thoughts you guys have on it. It really does help me sort all this stuff out. And thank you to the Patreon supporters for supporting this content and just for everyone who's watched until now. I really do appreciate it, guys. Thank you for watching today's video, and I'll see you in the next one. Have an awesome rest of the week.